Hi, Lisa here with IVF Manifesting a Miracle and talking with Dr. Green for a clinical conversation today. Hey, Dr. Green. How's it going? Good, good. We got a lot of good response from our last uh, talk about the PGTA testing. <laughs> we did last time the PGS um, pre-genetic implantation screening test, and I know it's changed different acronyms and all of that, but kind of at the end of that talk, we chatted a little bit about embryo grading, mm -hmm. and I thought it would be a good kind of follow-up to discuss that topic today. Great idea. Does that sound? <laughs> um, so with embryo grading, um, how important is it? I mean... It's a perfect place to start, and... Okay. and you know, the, the point of embryo grading is it provides sort of a, a common language that different centers can use in describing their embryos. And, you know, very much in the way that, you know, different universities can use a common grading system of A, B, C, and D, or grade point average, just to communicate similar things. But an A at one center is somewhat different than an A somewhere else, okay? okay? Now, when it comes to embryo grading, this is something I try to explain to people all the time, which is kind of shocking in a high-tech field like ours. The embryo grading that's used by most centers today is commonly referred to as the Gardner classification, named after David Gardner, the embryologist that first described this in the late 1990s. Yeah, it's pretty okay? old. <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, the grading has not really evolved or changed over those last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So if you look at embryos that were graded 15 years ago with the Gardner's classification, that sometimes means very different things than some of the embryos that are graded today. And okay. so the grading is one aspect of trying to estimate what an embryo's potential is. And it's a way of trying to simplify in a very few number of characters where that embryo is at in its stage of development. So most commonly when people talk about grading of embryos, they're talking about embryos at the time of the freezing, okay? which are usually blastocysts. You know, the blastocyst is the embryo that's really at that stage where it's ready to arrive into a woman's uterus. And it's either, you know, frozen uh, or it's biopsied and then frozen, or at some centers it's transferred fresh. But that's the stage where the embryo is considered fully developed and ready to implant. And that's typically okay. day five and, or seven, between day yeah, five. Yeah, exactly. And I, I always tell people it's, you know, because people say, is day five better than day six? I always tell people it's kind of like puberty. You know, there's sort of a range of normal. If you <laughs> go through puberty at age 10 or 11, is that better than 12 or 13? It's all in the normal range. Okay. But we know that if it's outside of the normal range, that's sometimes problematic. And, and so day five and six is considered the standard, but some embryos that take seven days can still be all right, but they're statistically less likely. So for instance, if you had an embryo that has an equal grade that was a day five embryo versus day seven, most people would use the day five. Okay. Okay. And sometimes, even if the embryo had a higher grade, if it was a day seven, it might not be used as the first embryo. So it's not just the grade, there's other things involved as well. But if you want, we could start out by just, I could summarize what the grading system yeah. is, because- That'd be great. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of a shorthand version of describing an embryo. And so usually if people are using the Gardner classification, they would use a number followed by two letters. The number refers to what stage of development. If an embryo is not you know, fully expanded, if it's just an early embryo, for instance, you know, early blastocyst, it would look something like this. And that okay. would be a number four. If it's like this, where it's fully expanded, uh, that would clearly be a four, whereas sometimes this would be considered a three. Again, it's the embryo. So this would be a four 
because here you could clearly see an inner cell mass ah. and you could see it starting to expand. Now, a grade five means that it's fully expanded and it's actually hatching. That okay. means day five? Like grade five is no, day five? Oh. No, the, the day is different than the grade. So you could have a, a grade five, you know, like a day five, grade four, you know. Okay. So the number refers to how far in the development. Gotcha. So if the embryo's hatching, if, if it's hatching, it's a grade five. And if it's completely out of the shell, it's a grade six. Mm. Okay, and, I mean, so I don't you could have a, a day five, grade six, or you could have a day five, grade four. It's not the day does not refer to the number. You, you use the day separately in the shorthand. So it's a day blank, and then there's a number, and the number says how far along it is. And then the two letters that follow, the first letter describes what's called the inner cell mass. And so sometimes it's better to look at a cartoon. Uh -huh. The inner cell mass is the group of cells that are actually gonna become the baby. Mm. And that group of cells, even though they, they all look the same, some of those cells have already genetically gone through some changes that indicate that they're going to become either muscle or bone or something else. So you wanna leave these cells alone. But these cells are given a letter grade of A, B, or C. And sometimes people will put a minus after it. And, and the numbers refer to how many cells you see, how they look under the microscope, and if they're all roughly about the same size of each other. And, the, and that that's inner all. Part, that, inner part, part? Me, that inner part is called the inner cell mass. Inner part. cell mass. And that's basically what becomes the baby. Okay. And then the final letter is refers to what's called the trophectoderm, which are the cells that are on the outside. And those are the cells that are actually gonna become the placenta. Mm. And so again, you know, in, in terms of each embryo is described by the day that it took to get to where it is, the number which de defines how far along it is, and then two letters that try to give you some idea of how, how the inner cell mass looks versus the trophectoderm looks. And so each embryo has a day, a number, and two letters. Okay, and so like the top, a top rated embryo would be AA? Like exactly, okay. but like I explained to people that it is uh, somewhat subjective, and it also can you know, have to do with the embryologist's experience. And so it's just like you know, using grading at universities, you know, what uh, a professor at an Ivy League school considers an A might be different than what a professor at a community college would recommend. Mm. And so, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that an AA embryo from one place is equal to an AA embryo somewhere else. Okay, and so, I, I don't know if you have research on this, but as far as poorly graded embryos, and the chance of implantation, do, are there any, like an embryo that is a CC has the potential to implant or? Yeah, and again, this is where each center should hopefully keep their own statistics, just like each university could usually tell you what percentage of their graduates go on to certain types mm -hmm. of careers. Mm -hmm. You know, so like for instance, we know what the implantation rate is for each grade of embryo that's graded at our, and frozen at our center. Mm -hmm. But when, a, when an embryo is coming in from another center, even though they're using the same grading system, we sometimes thaw the embryo and it's like, wow, I can't believe what they graded this as. You know? <laughs> and yeah. so you know, it, it could sometimes be very, very surprising and not always in a good way. That's interesting. So when you get embryos transferred from other clinics, they're frozen and then you have to thaw them. And then can you, you can you freeze and thaw and unthaw back? Yes, and absolutely. Can... And, and we're, you know, different centers are different, but we're very selective about where we'll accept an embryo from. Oh, interesting. Because if we thaw an embryo and we say, this isn't a very good embryo, they're usually angry at the person that, that, the embryo not at the person that froze it you know 
And so we want to be held accountable for our embryos, but we can't always be accountable for an embryo that was graded or frozen by somebody else. Like at our center, for instance, we don't freeze grade C embryos. Okay. And the reason is we find that, first of all, they have a very low freeze-thaw survival rate you know, that's in the 70% or lower. Now, 70% might sound pretty good by some people's standards, but embryos that we do freeze have a 99% freeze-thaw survival rate. So there's a big difference there. Yeah. First off. Secondly, grade C embryos are far less likely to implant than higher grade embryos. And if they do implant, they're far more likely to miscarry. When and you say so, C, is it CC or is it the first letter or the second letter when you say grade Well, C? it depends. Like, for instance, if, if a grade, if an embryo is grade CB, yeah. the, then the first letter means the inner cell mass looks not so good. Yeah, okay. But the second letter means the placenta looks good. So you've probably heard of people having an empty gestational sac, which is like a, a pregnancy that has a placenta but has no baby. That was probably a CB embryo. That's interesting. Okay. And so, again, this is why both letters need to be good. Mm. But if an embryo has a BC embryo, it means it has a good inner cell mass, but the placenta might not be able to implant and support the embryo. And so, that's why both letters need to okay. be acceptable. You so see? You freezing the, you don't freeze anything that's a C at all. The C. No, because. Because what we find is that grade C embryos are so unlikely to result in a live birth okay. that even if it results in a pregnancy, it's almost never going to be a live birth. Um, and, and, you know, and that's why we don't want to put someone through not only the, uh, the testing, but then putting them through the medication, the mm -hmm. preparation, and then get their hopes up only to have an embryo either fail to implant or implant and then miscarry, you know, and, and not to mention the fact they go through all the financial and emotional right. costs okay. of that. Yeah. It's just not something we do, you know. It's pretty, and, yeah, it's pretty important. And you and I on our last call chatted a little bit. I mean, like some of my embryos that were rated higher were not healthy embryos. And my, our daughter was, I don't even remember her grade, but, um, giving hope to people that you could have a less qual I don't know the quality could be a little less well and again quality is a very different word lisa because you know when we talk about the genetic testing that's one measurement of quality because you're actually measuring the dna okay <laughs> and so i have seen people produce aa embryos that are so genetically imperfect that there's no way they could result in a pregnancy. Yeah, they are. And very so that's why that's why the grading alone has to be looked at in in as part of a bigger picture. Gotcha. And and one of the things, right? <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that I, I've always found very surprising, and this gets back to one of the first things we talked about today is that the genetic testing wasn't even available when the Gardner system came along. Huh. And yet it's never been modified to include the genetic testing. Oh. And so for people that aren't doing genetic testing, the grading system is all the data you have. Mm. But with today, if you have genetic testing, well, then the genetic testing system is most important. Yeah. And the grading is then the next most important. That, that's important for people to recognize, I think, you know, like it, it used to be the grading. Well, it's more the genetic component of the embryo. Well, and, and part of the reason that we stopped freezing uh, or even biopsying grade C embryos is we did it initially when the genetic testing was available and we saw how rarely they came back as having anything that was even close to normal. Oh. And then yeah, on the rare times it would be something close to normal, the embryos didn't seem to ever survive thawing. So what was the yeah. point? Uh, the word normal, like, it, and that just means, mat well, the matching chromosomes, but I hate the word normal. Like, it's kind of... Well, and, and, and I agree with you. And yeah. the only reason I use that word is the proper word is euploid. 
Euploid. Spelled E-U-P-L-O-I-D. But most people don't know what euploid means. Gotcha. That means it has the right genetic material. And then an embryo that does not have the right genetic material is referred to as aneuploid. Right. You know, and, and again, those are the proper terms, and they're the terms that we use, but most people don't, don't really relate to those terms. And unfortunately, those terms aren't common enough to be even in standard dictionaries. You got to look at a medical dictionary to see what euploid or aneuploid means. Thank you. Um, I, I'm curious about if you are transferring, say, more than one embryo and they're different grades, any data behind that? Like if Absolutely. Like, I'll give you an example. I had a patient last week that had two embryos, and one was a BB and the other was a BB minus. And, you know, one of the things I explained to them is that the BB minus embryo technically had a weaker placenta. Mm. And so I always, you know, I refer to a situation like that as imagine you've got two bicycle riders and one's a strong rider and one's not as strong. If they get on a tandem bicycle rider, they're, they're both more likely to make it to the top of the hill together, you know, and, and you hang the on point to the being, <laughs> yeah, and then the point is, is that if someone's got a B minus embryo, you know, when it comes to the trophectoderm, that embryo is going to actually be enhanced and given a better chance if it's paired up with a stronger embryo. Interesting. Okay. And the minus part, like... Can you explain that again? So sometimes there's a plus or there's a minus? Yeah, there's usually not a plus, but okay. a minus is usually an embryologist's way of saying, this embryo doesn't look, you know, challenged enough that I would give it a C, but it doesn't look strong enough that I'd give it a solid B. And oh. so that's their way of saying, I want to freeze this one, but I don't want to hold it equal to the other B, B embryos. Gotcha. And the embryologist is the one who does all the grading? Correct. Yeah. And They're they the ones that, that, and again, you know, most of them are doing it uh, according to the Gardner classification from, you know, what was originally presented 20 years ago. Okay. Seems like that needs to be updated, huh? <laughs> well, or at least acknowledge that it's kind of a standard that's been around for a long time, even though a lot has changed since then. And and, and it's a way of saying that the grading system is helpful. Mm -hmm. It does create a common language, a shorthand for us to describe embryos, but it's not a perfect description. And I would never consider grading to be equal to quality. Grading is only an estimation of whether or not an embryo has a reasonable chance of implanting. Okay. This is helpful. Um, one other thing that popped in my head, you mentioned something about hatching. Um, some of the embryos say if they're day five or day seven, they're hatching out of their shell. Is there a point where you can't let, em I mean, you can't let embryos hatch completely? Yeah, you can. That's a grade six embryo. Okay. We transfer grade six embryos all the time. Oh, okay. So they can, can be completely hatched and and, and to be honest you? with you, different embryologists are different. I could tell you ours prefer to try to freeze them before they fully hatch. Okay. Just because in their mind, it's a little bit protected if it's mostly in the shell. But the reality is, you know, you know, grade six embryos do great at, okay. uh, at our center, and I think at most centers. But if you had an embryologist that's maybe a little rougher in the way they handle embryos, it might be a little bit more susceptible. And the thawing and unthawing, like that won't hurt really the embryos? By not if it's done carefully by people that are well-trained. Absolutely not. Every embryo should always be handled with the utmost care. It doesn't matter if it's a four or a six. Oh, I'll never forget our transfer day. I mean, just <laughs> watching the handover of the 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 what do you call it i don't even know the catheter catheter and it's handed to the doctor and just that i mean i like when you zoomed in on the you know the petri dish and you're just like oh my gosh like it's it's a miracle that really it all can work it's, out <laughs> it's a lot of fun it really is yeah. oh my goodness well this is really informative um i'm sure if people have more questions they can send them in and um, I'll share them with you if I get some questions about this, but appreciate you going over, going over the grading and um, explaining a little bit more about how important it is.
to to like not only at grading but the genetic testing as yeah. well um, as always have a very happy day thank you you too and for anyone that is needing extra support on their fertility journey reach out to me at ivf manifestingamiracle.com and dr green has a blog enhancingfertility.com so and i see you have ohio state back there did you go there <laughs> i got both my degrees there and i'm oh, not yeah. going to get a football season this year oh. but i can still show my pride <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll be different huh sports will be different this year for sure but absolutely thanks so much for all your information Stay happy, Lisa. Thank you. Bye, everybody.